Hello, hello, hello. Greetings to you and happy Wednesday. So this is um, the midweek check-in. Um, I have some good news that I have been feeling pretty good for the last few days. And that's great for me because I have been, you know, struggling and having anxiety and emotions and stuff lately. So I <clears throat> am grateful that I have been okay. I had a great birthday, you know, it was a chilling and relaxed day. It was great. Well, until we had to deal with the van with journey, that's a different issue. We're not going to get into that. Um, I want to thank everybody that sent me um, some cash for my birthday. I greatly appreciate it. Um, I will be taking my trip soon. I don't have the date yet just because I'm still looking. I don't even know where I want to go. Um, I've been wanting to camp, but it's really been hot here. And we're still having issues with journey at the present my doors still do not lock so that has been holding me up as well as the heat so hopefully that will be resolved um i was able to complete the classes all the classes and pay the fees to get to renew my nursing license so that has been done um i paid my tolls <laughs> which was good because i didn't have to pay nearly as much as I did last time, $1,100. Can you believe that? I actually had $1,100 in tolls that I had to pay last renewal before I could get my um, registration. So that's complete. Um, I've been drinking more water, so I'm proud of that. Journaling, um, I've been journaling, but I can do more. Um, this is new, so I'm having to get used to uh, doing that um, I mean that's pretty much I've I've been you know handling my goals and um, making progress so I'm proud of myself for that so what goals have you guys um, said that you were going to complete that you have not completed yet for the month of July we usually do weekly which is still good to have our weekly goals but since this is my birthday month, I wanted to do a monthly go. Um, so I do also want to talk about, um, this is something that I haven't discussed with you guys before. Um, I actually have um, companion and home health agencies that I started. And during COVID time, I stopped accepting clients and all of that, even though that would have been a perfect time to do it. It's just that when, you know, workers were not reliable and I would rather not have to deal with the stress of workers not showing up or um, me having to go to the assignments. Um, it was a bit overwhelming during that time and it was very hard to find workers. So I've been thinking about um, getting back in it and marketing to start gaining clients and employees. Um, a client I was doing, he needed care seven days a week, um, 12 hours a day. So when my worker would call off, then I would have to go in and do that shift. So it was a bit much because I was still working full time, trying to work and then also do the client at the same time. So um, just have to think about that, like calling off at the last minute and um, having employees and them not really being reliable. So that's what caused me to stop marketing and getting any more new clients. So um, I'm thinking about doing that and maybe just starting off doing clients by myself um, for a while and hopefully the market is better with employment and workers, you know, being reliable and really wanting to work. And then I may be able to add some employees. And then also during that time, I 
also opened up a lab, which I had, I really didn't forget about, but I received this um, to renew my lab, um, the lab fees or whatever. So it's $180 and then I'll be certified for two years. So all of them is like two years. The home health you renew, just like the nursing license, every two years, you have to pay a fee to renew the home health agency, two years, the companion agency, two years, nursing license, two years, and this is a CLIA lab. So with this lab, I'm able to perform drug tests, um, COVID tests, flu, um, different type of tests, you know, pregnancy, drug, well, I said drug already. Um, so I have that as well, a lab. I have a lab and it's called Chosen One Mobile Labs. So I'll come out to you and I will do whatever lab work you need completed. So I um, also have that. So I have quite a few things that are quite a few ways that I can make money and make income. It's just a matter of dedicating the time to do these things and finding, you know, employees. So, um, I just wanted to share that with you guys because, you know, there's, there, we have business opportunities and we can, but you can't overburden yourself and cause more stress to yourself by trying to run the businesses alone or to find the employees. So if you can, you know, start yourself and as the clientele becomes too much to handle by yourself is when you will hire, you know, caregivers or workers. But um, I feel like the economy is getting a little better with that. So I can, you know, start. So that is a couple of more things that I would have to add to my things to do. Um, I received a phone call from, um, the insurance company when I had witnessed that accident. And it's very saddening to me because I'm not a racist. I'm not prejudiced. I love everybody. And, you know, I don't have a problem with anybody, but even a comment that was made, um, about the older couple they were older, they were like about in their 80s and they were white. And it was a comment like, oh, I'm sure they were afraid or fearful. And that was an excuse for their behavior. And that wasn't true. Like, I know for sure they weren't. I mean, I can't say 100%, but by their body language and by verbally what they were saying, they were not afraid, they were not fearful. And that's the thing now, people are always saying, I was afraid or I was fearful. And in most cases, that's not true. So um, the insurance company did call me. And again, it's, it, it really was, I was just saddened because like I said, when I walked up, when I came to the, um, to the, where they were parked, um, I just saw the older white couple and they were just, standing there, you know, and they were outside of the vehicle. So I immediately went to them because I'm like, they're older and I wanted to make sure they were okay. And the way they looked at me, like, you know, they were better or they didn't, you know, they didn't, they didn't speak to me. They didn't speak to me at all. They looked me up and down and I was like, wow, you know, I don't understand why people are that way. But it didn't bother me because I'm like, hey, I'm just trying to provide help or assistance if you need it. So that's when I went over to the car and it was the young black guy in there. And he, like I said, he was in probably 30. Um, and he was sitting in the car and he had his phone on speaker. And I got to thinking then like, wow, I can imagine how he feels because the the older couple... And the reason I say they weren't fearful because they were being aggressive. They were saying to him, like, I don't understand why you're not sharing your information and why you just won't give it to me. And he was just like, well, 
you know, um, the police are on their way. I will let them handle it. So immediately I thought of, you know, it's 2023 and the world we live in, society, I understand that he could have been fearful because um, he's a young black guy, okay? And the couple is older and white. So I immediately thought, you know, that's why he was sitting in his car because he didn't want to be considered an aggressor. By him just getting out of his vehicle, they could have been like, well, you know, he lashed out at me, he threatened me, he was being aggressive. So he did the right thing was to just stay in his vehicle and then he made a call and it was on speaker to have a witness. And it's sad that we have to do that like, like me, like we as in black people, we as in younger black people, even younger than me, like I'm, I'm in my forties, I'm not really considered young, but teens, you know, people in their mid twenties, early twenties, thirties, like it's really sad that that is the norm for us. Like we have to sit back and be passive because even by him getting out of his vehicle, and talking to them, it could could have potentially been seen as being aggressive. And I felt for that young man because he was just like, I just want the police to get here and get it over with, you know? And um, when the police called me, he was grateful that, you know, I did. And then I even had comments where people were like, yeah, you saw that they were okay. I would have kept going. For one, I'm not you. For two... I know how people are treated, you know? So I know that there possibly was gonna be an issue with it. So that's why I wanted to be a witness. I was gonna be a witness anyway. I didn't see colors, I didn't see ages, I didn't see any of this when the accident happened. I didn't even see it until I pulled up. I saw the couple, I didn't even see the guy because he was in his vehicle. Um. So the police, he automatically had some type of vibe about him. Um, and it's crazy because it clearly was the older people's fault, okay? But we have, and I'm not gonna say, I. it's hard to use the proper words, but we, or he, has to prove yourself even when it's a proven fact okay so the police that was an issue so this morning the insurance company called me and again they were basically trying to say that it was the young guy's fault and it was not um even though the car well the car the older people was driving was in the turning lane and the car the guy was in was in the straight lane and he was going straight and the light was green. We were in the turning lane and the arrow was red. They wanted to get over and they, and it's a very busy street and they jumped over and hit the back of his car. You really can't hit another vehicle going straight through a green light and your back of, with the back of your car. So even though all of that occurred, they were still trying to get to say that the young black guy was at fault. And I'm like, no, like they clearly, they're like, are you sure he wasn't switching the lanes over? And no, he was going straight and the light was green. They were in the turning lane, red light, and they decided they wanted to jump over and they hit the back of him. So it's like, even though all of that, and I know that because that's how they do here in Florida, like they'll write someone a ticket and you know, they, they're reliable, you know, no matter what happened, the police automatically pick who's in the right or wrong and you get a ticket and then you go through the insurance company. So they might not even gotten a ticket but it, I know that they do. Whoever's in the wrong gets the ticket here. But he basically, we have to defend him even though he was in the right. And they kept asking me over and over again, like, 
you know, they wanted to say that he was at fault. And it's just, it, it really touched me because it's like, I'm glad that I was able to be there and to witness it because more than likely, he probably would have been at fault if, if it wasn't for me. And it's just because that he's a young black guy. I mean, that's all I could really think of. Like, there's no explanation for him going straight in a green light. His front of the vehicle, as you can see, was not hit. So he didn't hit anything. Something hit him. But they were still trying to find a way around it. But um, I, you know, just was glad that I was able to help out. But that is my, my week so far. I have, um, mm, I'm just going to clean up a little bit today and make some dinner and um, maybe like look up some places to tr to visit and um, look for some, a day that may be good for me to go camping. Just wanted to um, update you guys and hope that your week is going great. And I want you guys to start those goals, continue those goals, and let me know what you're achieving and what you have achieved. Thank you so much for watching. Thank you for your love and your support. You can have a great rest of your week. Until next time, bye-bye.